A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Whenever he enters, say to the master of the house, the teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. Make the preparations for us there. The disciples then went off and entered the city and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it and gave it to them and said, take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks and gave it to them and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink it again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. I think summer is finally here. But if we wait until Monday or Tuesday, we may be back into winter again. Quite often, when I go to donate blood, as I'm lying there on the cot that they have for us, I begin to think about how vital blood is to life and the sacredness of which it is regarded in every culture. Thanks to the medical science, we know a lot about the complex life-giving nature of blood. The people of the Old Testament and in the time of Jesus did not have this knowledge but they had a deep respect for blood. Blood, as we have come to know it, sustains, sustains our life. While they were eating, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his friends and said, take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. As we hear these words today, on this feast of the body and blood of Christ, when growing up, I remember it as the feast of Corpus Christi. It brings back memories and I suggest that they prompt memories of masses in which you have participated in the past, in the recent past or long ago. Some of those masses were simple. Some of them may be a wedding or may have been a funeral. Some of those masses were solemn, some in sacred places others in chapels or cathedrals, some perhaps in fields or in homes or in stadiums. Whether you were young or old, strong or weak, whether you were in the company of friends, family or alone, or sat on the edge of the assembly, you were present at those masses. For myself, it was sitting on the side of, Mount Beata of the Mount of Beatitudes 
with some friends of mine when we went to the Holy Land years ago. That experience drew us into a deeper experience of what Eucharist was. We come to the Eucharist this day to give thanks, to remember our Lord in the breaking of bread. We are there to gain nourishment for our souls, to deepen our commitment to discipleship. We are there to hear the word of God. We are there to allow ourselves to draw closer to one another, to believers who treasure this gift of the Eucharist as we do. Corpus Christi, not a city in Texas, but the centerpiece of our Christian life. Remember back to a year ago when we were on lockdown in our homes, deprived of the gift of Eucharist because of a pandemic. How we longed once again to draw close to the Eucharist, to draw close to that meal that was given to us by Jesus, to draw close to this sacred space, to celebrate once again with family and friends this sacred meal that nourishes and strengthens us for our journey of faith. I think back to those people whom I have worked with over the years that were in prison, those that were in rehabilitation centers or in nursing homes how they could not celebrate Eucharist as we do on a weekly basis. A prisoner who was released, a young man who came out of a nursing home, and another who had come home from the rehabilitation center said to me, they could not wait to quote unquote, get out, so that they could once again come to the Eucharist a meal that sustains them for their life. Take this, all of you, and eat, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. Words that affect the change in bread, change in the bread to the body of Christ, and at the same time describe the Christian life that is to be lived out as bread broken and passed around for nourishment of others. Each of us are called to be bread broken for our family, for our husbands, for our wives, for our children and grandchildren, for our neighbors and coworkers, for those of a different race, and the list goes on. The poured out life is an expression that comes to my mind when I hear the words of consecration spoken over the wine. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Just as Jesus poured out himself for us, we are invited to pour ourselves out in selfless giving and service to one another to the poor and to the oppressed, to those who stand at our borders. These symbols of bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ, are powerful reminders of what we are called to be as Christians, as followers of Christ. So what are we waiting for? Why are we holding back to be the body of Christ and the blood poured out for one another. In this Eucharist, we, offer, we are offered nourishment for our journey of faith. As our ancestors ate manna in the desert and it strengthened them for their journey in what was called the Exodus, so we have our food for our journey of faith in the Eucharistic meal that we celebrate. It is not enough for us to be passive recipients for the Eucharist that we have to get with and to take on the discipleship that each of us are called to, the task of serving our brothers and sisters, 
the task of building a world fit for the arrival of the kingdom. That means loving one another as Christ has loved us. It means making the poured out life our way of life. When Christ died upon the cross, his body was broken. He poured out his blood. He lives again in our world each time we are broken and poured out for one another.